Welcome back, guys. So the secret is out about Florida and its inventory problem with media outlets like Newsweek coming out, just one of them, and saying that Florida has the most listings in the nation where it says motivated seller in the description. <laughs> if you guys have been following me or some of the action down here, you kind of know that's been the trend for a little bit. It's really picked up to the point now where the national media has gotten a hold of it. Uh, there is actually an article in Bloomberg which shocked me the other day, uh, pointing to some of Florida's massive invent housing inventory problems, not just condos and townhomes, but housing overall. And they specifically named two problem areas were, where I am today, Punta Gorda, Florida, and Cape Coral. Now, if you guys keep track of the channel, you already know this, but to see it go mainstream like that and start being reported on sites like Newsweek and Bloomberg, well, secrets out, guys. Today, I am down on the Harbor Walk here, right outside of the Four Points Sheridan. Got a nice tiki bar, some volleyball if you guys want to play, take a spin out onto the dock. Great day for it, as I've mentioned. Pull your boat up, come over and eat. So at this point, it's not just me taking notice. It's not just me, it's not just you guys. It's a lot of people are starting to realize that, holy cow, we've got a lot of houses listed. Now, we are pulling a good amount off. If you guys saw my trailing seven days, we had more pendings on there than we typically do uh, or historically have had for quite some time. So looks like March is probably going to be a strong month for closings. Where we go after that, I don't know. But to see, you know, the recognition and the spotlight being shined on Florida now by almost everybody in the country, whether it's our HOA problems, our insurance crisis, our condo problems, uh, now our inventory problems, it, it can really change the layout of the landscape here so i had you know i've got my predictions and my thoughts before all of this came into play i thought we had too many houses listed so it's going to be really interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out now with kind of this bad press lingering out there as well as you guys can probably tell pretty crowded down here today we have a taste of Punta Gorda festival going on over 41 i'll cut you guys through there as well where i was going to actually shoot didn't realize that that was going on and holy cow it's packed so you guys can see now if it's not only sellers realizing it sellers are coming to the realization that holy cow i better start cutting my price or really start getting negotiable uh it's it's builders as well you know i got an email from a local builder the other day 21 move-in ready homes up and down the southwest car to florida coast went from fort myers to basically northport and i was like wow they got 21 of these things sitting move in ready right now and you know customers that I've taken out to new construction areas, new developments and things like that. It's it's kind of strange to see how the demeanor has changed, you know, that's like, hey, let's have a conversation, make an offer. What are you thinking on a few of them? Now, there are some that still have their heels dug in the sand. A uh, one we went to just completely shocked me. Uh, I'll tell you, they're building a middle school and a high school near this property. And they have a very big playground. They have a very you know, family friendly atmosphere. And the sales rep seemed kind of shocked when my customer asked, well, what kind of demographics do you have here? <laughs> he said, oh, well, of course we have empty nesters really and snowbirds. And I'm kind of surprised because we thought we would attract more of a family vibe with the amenities we have. Well, one, those schools aren't built yet. Actually, I don't even think the playground and pooler are fully completed, but these houses in Northport in Welland Park started 700 thousand dollars that's before the land so you're looking at 750 eight hundred thousand dollars i'm not sure where they got the median income for the area who that they thought <laughs> what what families they thought were going to be flocking there at those prices but they were very surprised to, to see that that's not who's filling the place up yeah obviously obviously you know with with remote work going down even if you're commuting from sarasota there's just not that many jobs for young people in Sarasota to support, you know, a 2000 house community. So I, I thought it was really odd that they, they didn't see that coming. It was very strange to me, but they are getting willing to work with you. They are looking to talk. So <laughs> is the gist that we're getting. Um, and if you guys remember, uh, we had new condos here being built probably about five or six months ago, I, I went to them and you know, they said the same thing. They're like, wow, we thought we'd get these all rented out to investors and it's $350,000 condos in Port Charlotte, guys. That doesn't, I don't even know how you cash flow that because what they were renting for, the people who tried it, were $1,900 a month. So 
<laughs> the numbers just don't work. And so it's not only sellers, guys, it's builders. Everyone's really coming to the realization that things have changed. Now we're getting rumblings that rates are not coming down at all this year. They're starting to pitch that out in the media as well. And that's really going to turn the tide because there's been a lot of sellers, buyers as well, holding on for that. And if that goes out the window, I think things are really set up for a big change here because everyone's kind of teetering on the edge waiting to see what happens. But now they're starting to talk about no rate cuts at all. And I have to thank the local association of realtors for stepping up and finally ordering more lock boxes because people are getting listings and we can't go get lock boxes for them. We rent the electronic lock boxes that's included in our association fee and they have not had to order any in years. And so many people are stuck with no lock boxes and no way to get their listings up and running that now they've been forced to order more because we ran out of listing lock boxes for the third time this week. Now, what I don't want this seller softness confused as is no buyers, because there are buyers, guys. We, again, are in our peak season here. People are buying. And if you find a motivated seller, you can get some pretty sweet deals right now. I mean, things that I, <laughs> I wouldn't have thrown at people in 2019, never mind the past three or four years. I, I, it would have been a long shot in 2019 to ask for some of the stuff that I'm asking for, for customers, and it's flying. And it's not just owners and builders, guys, landlords are in a bad way right now too. You wanna to see motivated people? Holy cow, I'm seeing things with two year, offering two year leases and the rent's estimate on the place is 1900. They're throwing it out there for 1650, seeing who will bite on a two year lease. Generally, what does that tell you? If they want you locked in for two years, guys, they don't think rents are going up in the next year or two. And if you guys follow the channel, you probably already know that down here specifically, but uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, I. I'm hearing from my colleagues who do rentals. It is super rough out there right now. I have told people that $2,000 was the magic number to get your place rented here. And people have heeded that advice and then come back to me, to my surprise, <laughs> and say, hey, um, drop my house to 250 Three bedroom, two bath, nice HOA community, two car garage. I'm sorry, drop my house down to 2000 a month. Nobody's calling. What's going on? And I'm almost to the point where I'm like, I don't are you sure? <laughs> like, it's worse than I thought. They're thinking about dropping it even lower. So just getting no hits on these rentals and the ones that do get inquiries. We have one, it's a three bedroom, two bath, one car garage that's on Zillow. And it's up for $1,650. It's a great price. Holy cow. Awesome price. It's an older house. You know, don't get me wrong, but for that kind of money, that's what you get right now. And it's been on for 43 days. It has 47 applications, inquiries on it. What is going on? Who is left to rent is my question at that point. If you have 47, that's an inquiry a day. Someone's calling every day and you have not found someone to be able to rent this place that's suitable for your requirements. That or they're purposely keeping it empty, but I don't think so. So rent wise guys, very, very weird here. I've been forecasting this for a long time that they were gonna start to see problems. But I mean, when I, re when like $1,700 isn't getting any calls. I mean, condos for $1,700, $1,600. Are they the pinnacle of luxury? No, but the luxury ones are like 19, 2000. So it's really weird right now. Rent still has a massive stink on it. And I, I think that some people choose to rent, but anyone who was in that position after what has been done and what has happened over the past two years has just opted to buy and say, I'm not dealing with this anymore. So this is what we're seeing. We had a house Another house up for 1600. It's been up for two days. Two days on Zillow. They're asking 1600. 72 inquiries. So now I have to wonder to myself, that's what 2000 would have done a few months ago. $2,000 for a home, a beautiful home, would have generated 72 inquiries in two days. Now it's taking 1600. So something to consider when you're out there too. Not just, like I said, it's not just sellers and builders. There's landlords that are going to be willing to talk to you and negotiate if you have the choice as well. So now we've ended up back in the front of Lashley Crab House. This is actually the entrance that everybody's going through today. As you can see back there, pretty packed. And I'll spin you to the parking lot.
Yeah, guys, I'm a little jealous about what they got going on there. That's a rock climbing wall. And a bounce house. Nice. Yeah, they're having a good old time down there. Let's zoom you out because speaking of walls, we are down by, as they say, you guys might have noticed, this is our Vietnam Memorial Wall down here as well that I'm walking past today. Also, as many of you guys have anticipated, starting to see the slow trickle, the slow trickle of shell houses, just concrete block houses that people have walked away from and are hoping to get someone else to come along and finish the completion. Sometimes they can be a great deal. I saw one that was about 2,000 square feet, nothing in it but the block, just the block up. And the block has some serious problems that they mentioned are going to need to be addressed, and they want 80,000 for it. So I just don't see why somebody who has the money would take on a headache project like that at that price. I would think it would need to be lower, but I am starting to see those slowly creep up as well. Hey. I think I recognize the hat. The hat from where? Where have you seen me before? Um, I don't know your name, Ben? No. Yeah, that's me. Ben? Yeah. We just moved down from uh, Seattle in December. Oh, nice. December. Okay. So cool. Now I'm watching about all the inventory. I'm like, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Today. Yeah. Yeah, so in some spots there are. Like Punagota Isle's got like 9.8 months of single family homes out there. It's a tough, it's a specific buyer, you know, it's waterfront. Love the videos though. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. What was your name? Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. Hey, Mike, I'm Ben. Nice to meet you. Nice guys. to meet you guys. So, hey, man, I appreciate it. Have a good one. Welcome to town. I got it. <laughs> there it was, guys, finally. All right. What a nice guy, too. Both of those dudes. What's really nice about this river walk trail, guys, is you get little bump outs when you get far away like this. You can get away from the hustle and bustle, come out here, sit if you want, take a look at the water, and you can see the parties all the way back there on that point. So there are quiet areas of it. It's very nice to walk or bike in the morning and the evening. And it takes you through some of our natural mangroves as well. And since you guys are all asking what better time than when I'm walking past the Cunagorda Justice Department to address your questions about the commission lawsuits. Guys, I don't know. I don't know what's going to go on. It's a really messy situation. One thing I will say is, and I tell my buyers this too, guys. I tell my sellers this too. Whenever you ask my opinion, Ben's opinion, remember, Ben gets paid when this is done. I get a check when you sell or when you buy. Always keep that in the back of your head for whatever I tell you. Now, generally, I try to keep stuff above board, but, you know, guys, people who make commission sales, it's really a pretty good rule to remember across the board. They may seem like your friend. They may be your friend, but they get paid when you transact, okay? Now, sellers paying the commission to buyer's agents, that's the big crux of the issue. Generally, the listing agent, here at least, negotiates with the seller. An overall commission, listing agent splits that commission. Traditionally how it's been, that's kind of, kind of come out of the fact that buyers didn't have representation. Buyers were going to listing agents and just working with listing agents, which I think is exactly what will happen again, in my opinion, if buyers, if buyers have to compensate their own agents, that's a hard sell to ask somebody, hey, Give me five, six, seven thousand dollars after I help you find a home. So either everything there's got to change. But I always thought it was strange the way it was phrased that seller pays the commission. Technically, the seller pays the listing agent here, then they pay the buying agent. So does seller pay commission when the transaction only occurs because the buyer brings the money? That's the hang up I've always had. Transactions do not happen without buyers, guys. It's sellers and agents can list and hang out all day. They're not going to make any money until a buyer shows up and brings them some cash or a loan at closing. So when everybody talks about the seller paying commissions, and I've heard some agents tell buyers that, don't worry, my services are free. You pay nothing. You may pay nothing up front, but who brings the money to closing? We got people enjoying some lunch down here at the Kelty Gray. Little rocking going on. So I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me with all this traffic. We'll be passing another spot here. Dean south of the border in a second. Here we go going by. This place is always pretty packed, always jumping. 
Uh, nightlife here is pretty good. People seem to like it. So I'm keeping an eye on uh, Hurricane Charlie's that we have. As you guys know, the hotel was supposed to be demolished and they did fence it off, but they have not started taking it down yet. Their graffiti kicked up a little bit, so I hope they get working with it and whatever comes out of the ashes is better than what was here before, as you guys are gonna see here in a second too. We have about three hotels already down here in downtown, not counting Sunseeker being over the bridge. This is actually the Wyvern Hotel that has a rooftop bar and sky deck. Across the street, we have the new suites. Behind that, we have the Four Point Sheridan, and that was the Tiki Bar that I took you guys through earlier. So I don't know if we need another hotel <laughs> down here, but again, I also don't know what else is gonna go on that harbor. Maybe some new apartments, maybe some new condos, we'll see. So that is what I got for today, guys. If you like this video, as always, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.